Hey, you're my favorite, baby. I mean it. I really can't stand all the rest of these people. Every one of them has some fatal glitch in personality. Whiners, freaks, crimps, cowards. Every one of them. Not you, Ted. No, man. Not you, Ted. You were a stand-up guy. You were a brave guy. Yes, a take-charge kind of guy. So, I'm going to give you, just you, the opportunity to get out, live some kind of life. I'm going to send you, if you're going to like this, I'm going to send you to the Room of Dark. If you can solve the puzzle of the Room of Dark, you're free. You out. You're away. I know I've made you a paranoid, Ted. I know you're scared, but I'm your friend. 109 years, I'm your best friend. So overcome your fear. Enter the Room of Dark, and you can solve its mystery. Okay, so if you take a quick look around you, this um, actually is more or less just a visual thing. There's no real anything here. Um, you just go into this building. Now, as you can see, we're completely underground, and that's more or less where the entirety of this game takes place. Um, the earth has been pretty much hollowed out, with um, most of it being am, which is kind of a terrifying idea. So then we have all these commands, just like the old, um, old style point and click adventure games. Okay, we're gonna go through here. Video screens. Each one shows a scene of some other place. Why? What mystery does Am want me to solve? Say, these video screens have palm print switches next to them. Okay, so very obviously we have certain pictures and we have little uh, palm things. Um, now, just to, I, I know what happens here, I'll just explain it because it's not terribly important. Um, this, again, I believe is trying to feed into Ted's paranoia, and that one of these screens is correct, all of the others will entirely end your scenario and you'll have to start again. So it's pretty much just random chance. There is a little clue if you look at it, and this is the right one here. A castle, right out of the Brothers Grimm. I feel like there's something watching me from the windows. You may also notice, and this is one of the more infuriating aspects of this game, is that you have to um, do some slightly odd ones. For instance, you can't push the hand into there, you actually have to push the monitor to do it. And here we go. What sort of intrigue is Am plotting this time? He's left me here alone, and still, I feel as though I'm being watched. Okay, so already we have a very medieval setting. Very gothic looking. <laughs> so typical of the castles I've visited in Europe. Is it beautiful the facade castle. disguising ordinary stone? Okay, so let's have a bit of a look around. Appearance is everything. So, look at the tapestry. So many women have called me their knight in shining armor, but never Ellen. Ellen, you remember, is the woman in the red clothing from the beginning. The other woman looks just like Only Ellen. One. She seems so sad and so beautiful. Okay, so as you'll see soon, Ted is in love with Ellen, but uh, it's a bit of a not so nice backstory in that Ellen has sex with all the other all the other characters, and Ted kind of wishes he was just hers. Why, it's Ellen! Again, like I said, very narcissistic. Did Am tell her that I loved her? Was that the secret he was referring to? So, I mean, Ellen's here. It says it's Ellen. But, I mean, this is already so far removed from what we've already seen. It's quite obviously not the real Ellen. Oh, something Ted. else. I feel so tired. So weak. Did Am do this to you? Yes. Maybe. I, I can't tell. They whisper in my ear in this bed is so soft. Can you walk? No, I'm too weak. I haven't been out of this bed in ages. Do you know if there's a way to escape from this place? Mm, that was what Anne promised was possible. I've been castle grounds before I fell ill. 
There's no escape for me. Death. No, I won't let you die. I can't take this suffering anymore, Ted. The things I've endured help me to die with dignity. Don't let anyone violate me again. Not even in death. No, don't go. I need you. We need you. If you really care for me, Ted, bring me my hand mirror. Okay, so already we have a very stereotypical fantasy kind of scenario. Um, she's ill, she needs a mirror. So we're automatically given a fetch quest from our true love, which is very, very campy. Why do you want a mirror? My stepmother has been jealous of me ever since she became ugly. She had something to do with my illness. And if it wasn't it. stereotypical enough, yes, her ugly stepmother is the one responsible. Where is your mirror? I left it on my dressing table. Bring it to me. So she's saying this dressing table, so obviously we're going to see if we can have a look at it. Perfume bottles, jewelry boxes, but no mirror. Ted, please tell me you found my mirror. Yeah, so obviously you looked I looked there. on it's your dressing there. table. Your mirror's not there. You have to find it, Ted. It's the only thing keeping my stepmother away, and it's the only thing that can finally end my suffering. So it's doing two jobs here, apparently. It's, um, it's keeping her stepmother away, and also the thing that can save her. So obviously it's very important that we get it. Alright, so she's gone to sleep, so let's have a little more of a look around the castle. Okay, now again, this is something which was a bit... <laughs> which was quite infuriating to play without um, having already know what to do. This is actually an entrance this way if you walk down. Despite the medieval trappings, I've seen kitchens like this before. This is a place where servants do all the work. Okay, so we've got a woman here. Let's have a chat to her. Excuse me, do you work here? Why, of course I work here. Why else would I be plucking this chicken? Say. You're a handsome gent. There aren't many men left in these parts. Okay, so obviously she's already coming on to Ted. And um, if you're thinking about Ted's character qualities and things like that, you know that obviously this is quite likely some kind of trap by Am to get into, um, give into his perceived nature. Where can I find a mirror? What do you want with a mirror? Those are pretty rare, what with an ugly woman in charge of the castle. That's the stepmother. Please, I need to find a mirror. You and I need. I'll make a deal with you. I will tell you where you can find a mirror if you spend some quality time in my bed. Now, one of the things this game often does is it, it provides many, many ways to do certain things. However, some of them are more damaging to you than others. Basically, as much as possible, you want to play around what Am expects you to do. And um, you'll see a lot of these throughout the game. So, obviously, Ted is a serial adulterer. He's, one of his things from his backstory is apparently that he used to um, pretend to be rich to sleep with women. And obviously, you're given an a, a, um, option to sleep with her. Um, that's what Am expects you to do, so we're not going to do it. That's a flattering offer, but I'm not interested. I'll give you what you need. Hasn't it been too long for you? Sorry, but it's out of the question. What's the matter? Aren't I good enough for you? Not classy enough? Not rich enough? I'm sure you're a fine woman, but my heart belongs to another. So? You're in love with that thing sleeping in a bed. Have you ever been with one? Or are you just curious? I can make you so much happier. I can, you know. Look, I am not going to make She's love with assistant. you. Oh, all right. I have another deal for you. The oven's broken. If you can fix it, I'll get you a mirror. Okay, this is another one of the 
this is kind of reverse psychology um, adventure game puzzle logic in that you know okay so fix the oven all right fix the oven okay so you go around looking for everything which fixes an oven and actually that's not what you do you just use the oven ah oh, there's the problem I'll have this fixed in a jiffy it's been so long since I've gotten dirt under my fingernails from good honest work Okay, there we go, so we got that working. So we will talk to her again. I fixed your oven. Now where is the mirror? Sorry, I don't know where a mirror is. But at least now, I can finish dinner. And you don't have any option with some of these dialogue options. That's the only thing you can say. used me, you bitch! Just like you tried to use me, you snobby bastard. Not quite true. I'll bet you've used lots of women with your smug charm. You're nothing but a phony. That is definitely true, though. Okay, so... Um... Not sure if there's anything else you can talk to about. Please, I need to find a mirror. Well... You did fix the oven. Listen, the old woman knows where the mirror is, but she's afraid of it. She obviously can't get to it herself, or she would have destroyed it by now. Where can I find the old woman? You might try a bedroom. She's always studying her books. Okay, so we just got to clear to go to the bedroom. Never saw what those two had in common. All right, so that's pretty much all we can do for here for now. Okay, so we have a couple of other rooms here. That one, that one, and that one. Let's go to this one just for now. This looks like a chapel, but there's something unholy about it. it okay. Must be the gargoyles. And there's not much to do here, but you can take this little pixel there. Nothing special about this rod except for the ridiculous gargoyle face on top. Okay, so we got that little item there. Oh yeah, occasionally people moonwalk. It's kind of funny. Alright, so let's check out these ones here. There's an evil in this room. Okay, so this is probably the room that we were looking me. for. Okay. Glass. Pieces of a broken mirror. Okay, so we're gonna take that because it's an adventure game and you're gonna Ow. take everything. Okay, so there we go. We've got a um bit of a broken mirror. Remember this lady likes to break mirrors because she thinks she's ugly. Okay, so let's have a look at these books. She said she was studying some books. Okay, so obviously right off the bat we have a bunch of um, kind of sinister books. This is a catalogue of the demons ruling the abyss. One of these entries is circled. Sergot, opener of locks. Supposedly he can open anything. Too bad I can't read Arabic. From the notes in the margins, I gather it has something to do with opening a gate into another world. Okay, so that's a little bit of key information we'll come back to you later. And of course, Philosopher's Stone here. Yeah. This book seems to be about how to change metals into gold. I've read a fair number of science textbooks, but I can't make head nor tail of any of these formulas. Okay, so not much use from that book there. Now, something you may have been noticing as we play through is every now and then there's a little bit of a fanfare that plays and the character will smile down here and the background will turn a slightly lighter shade of green. So it's kind of, you know, it's a fairly dark green at the moment. Um, but as we do more good things, the brighter that gets. As we do more bad things, the darker it gets. And that very much affects what happens later in the game. Okay, so we've got the glass. From that room, let's go in this other room here we haven't been in. This must be the bedroom of the Lord of the Castle. So this is the um, the uh, Ellen's father in this little scenario. Okay, he's got a bunch of books too. Okay, so looking through these, you can see it's a very, very different kind of thing. I've read this novel. It's about a foolish old man who believes he's a knight destined to revive the golden age of chivalry. Kind of like Ted with his narcissism, as you might think. We have Faust, selling his soul 
I know this story. It's about a magician who sells his soul to the devil in exchange for power. Okay, so we got Faust. We have the journal. Now this is the journal of the, um, again, Ellen's father. First passage reads. He writes in all caps, apparently. My new wife continues her rapid aging. Each day is as a year to her. I believe that the magic drains her, twists her. The second passage reads. The incantations I hear from my wife's infernal workroom are the purest evil. Perhaps it is her hatred of my daughter that drives her up there. The third passage reads. Ellen grows weaker and weaker. My wife advises an antidote to her illness, but it lies very far away. I must assemble a caravan. So again, the wife hates Ellen, and it, she recommended an antidote, so again that seems pretty dodgy. The passage reads, The forest has grown dark and overrun with dire wolves since my marriage. I doubt that even with a full complement of men I shall return alive, but I must try. Okay, so some time ago he left with a bunch of people to try and get an antidote for Ellen and he ran off into a um, forest full of direwolves, so I'm sure you can imagine how that was supposed to finish. This was one of my favourites. It's about how King Arthur assembled the most chivalrous knights in all Europe. Okay, so again, chivalry, kind of like Ted wants to be. This is some classic dialogue about the nature of love. Again, relating to Ted. I know this. It's Dante's epic journey through hell, heaven, and purgatory. Okay, so that's pretty much all we can do there for now. We've read all the books. And um, is Lady Ellen prepared? Have a new as character. ready as she will ever be. The spell keeps her body witches. weak, but she will remain conscious. The art of sacrifice is reduced to science. And what of the glamour? We must wait for its removal. It remains beyond our best efforts. Then we wait for a prince. With his help, we can open the gate to the other world. So Ted's obviously thinking that, you know, he heard a prince, they need a prince to escape to another world. That's what Am said he could try and do. Where did they go? So again, this might be what Am expects us to do, so it may not be a good thing to do. But where did they go? Well, where did they go? Oh, look, sconces. Sconces are always good in video games. So if we use the sconce, I can't remember which one it is. It's bolted to the wall. Okay, it's not that one. Okay. A secret passage. So there we go. What's waiting for me up there? Good question. Let's find out. It's the witch. This is the stepmother. What's she doing with her hands? Some kind of incantation, perhaps? What a horrible old witch. She seems ready to keel over any second, but it could be fatal to underestimate her. Hmm. Okay, so let's have a chat to her. What have you done to Ellen, you old witch? Ah, our prince has finally arrived. Now we can begin our ritual. What ritual are you talking about? A sacrifice, a trade. Ellen's life in exchange for safe passage through the gate. What's supposed to be my role in this ritual? I need you to destroy Ellen's mirror. She has been using it to keep me away from her. I want you to break it so that I can complete what I have started. Okay, so she's asked us to destroy the mirror, the mirror which will save Ellen and keep her away. So I don't think that's something we really want to do. Where's Where the mirror? Is Ellen's mirror? It is on her dressing table. No, it's not. I looked on Ellen's dressing table. The mirror's not there. You must find that mirror. It has great magical properties. Without it, I cannot guarantee that I can complete the ceremony. Okay, so... Yeah, 
What's in it for me? for me if I help you? An opportunity to escape Am's tortures forever. So that obviously does not sound like something Am would do. Um, so instantly, if, you, if you're thinking about it, you should think that that's, that's not something that's going to happen, really. Okay. So, let me have a let think, me about think about your offer. Do not think too long. The forces at work here are not patient. Okay, so she wants a mirror to complete her ceremony. And remember, if you think about it before, we were talking about summoning and opening portals. So we're not quite sure what she's doing at this stage, but we're pretty sure it's not great. Because it wasn't ridiculous enough already, here we now have the devil. So, and yes, it is the devil. He's got a nice little pointy tail and a fabulous little um, vest there, nicely covered in sequins or something. He's um, actually quite an um, interesting character in this one. He's one of the few people who seems to make much sense in this game. Who are you? I'm a devil, of course. Why else would I have this pointed tail? So obviously it's some, some kind of character in this drama. Can you tell me where Ellen's mirror is? Sorry, I don't bother with such material things. They only bring about bad luck. Hmm, okay. What do you want? Ellen's soul. That's a valuable commodity where I come from. Okay, and Sergat was in the book before that we read. Who is this Sergat I've heard about? I think reference to He's a minor spirit, a demon. Don't confuse him with those pathetic imps, or heaven forbid, higher order devils. Opener of all locks, indeed. It sounds like you really hate demons. You got that right. In fact, the only things we consider worse than those untrustworthy fellows are angels. And you can call them out for being, you know, um, being pretty silly. Please, go away! Try to understand my position. I can't leave because there's an angel coming to take away her soul. If I step out and your friend croaks, the holy eunuch spirits the goods off to heaven. Okay, so that's obviously something we want to happen. Um, so, um, can have a chat to Ellen again? Ted, please tell me you found my mirror. I can't let you die. The devil is waiting to take your soul. My soul was taken long, long ago, Ted. And not just by Am. Anything would be better than this never-ending torture. Go back to sleep, Ellen. Okay, so pretty much yes. exhausted our options for now for that. Um, That's what I need. But you may notice that she basically kind of sounds like she wants to die um, and if you've read the book you'll understand that that's something which is quite appealing to all the characters okay so we're gonna go back now this is a very adventure gamey in this next little bit it's it would be very frustrating if I hadn't you know if I was doing this again for the first time um, you may notice <laughs> there's an extra book Luckily, I'm up on my Shakespeare, or I wouldn't have noticed this book about witches. There's the spell that the witch must have cast on Ellen. The incantation is... Kala Ingma Thacko. Alright, so we've just got a bit of all extra information there. This is a cult. Um, and again, so it doesn't matter if you go there before. There's nothing you can do to get that piece of information of before. There's a the circle I saw in the secret room. The inscription says, Complete the charm to summon the spirit, but do not break the circle or the spirit will escape. Okay, so again, that's, that's quite important, uh, as you'll find out fairly soon. Okay, let's, let's leave that for now. Okay. Okay, so... We now have a bit more information. We've got the spell, and we also know a little bit about doing the summoning, summoning ritual. Okay, so let's have a chat to the witch. All right, uh, where is it? Okay, 
Okay, so it's actually off the edge of the page. Oh, I can't click it. That's odd. Yeah, this game is a bit glitchy sometimes. Why do you call me a prince? Isn't that who you want to be to Ellen? Her prince charming? Yes, it is, and Am knows it. I need someone to gain her trust, to break down her defenses. It's a part you played many times in the real world. Also true. I know all about the sleeping spell you cast on Ellen, and I'm prepared to use it on you. Foolish mortal! You don't have the ability to use the spell properly! Okay, so that's actually wrong. So you have these three options. Only one of them is correct. So unless you're paying attention, you um, oh, you won't get that I? one. Kala Ingma well, it is a one Thaco. in three chance. Oh, I suddenly feel so... so sleepy. And it's super effective. Alright, so... Did you see the... Uh, tiny thing which you need to do because if you miss this piece of chalk that she just dropped then then you won't get very far again adventure games okay so so you have to complete the circle but don't break it okay. why'd you have to finish the circle now I'm stuck here until we work out a trade okay so as you can see backgrounds getting a little bit greener we're feeling a bit better we're making some progress all right so who are you? I am Surgat, opener of locks. Am and I are brothers. More or less. Now this is the first thing you hear about Am being more than just a single entity. And um, it's uh, kind of a bit odd. You'll are see you it more as we keep going. You are another Am? It would be more accurate to say that I am a part of him. A part that he doesn't know exists. So the sentience is growing sentience, basically. Um, and they, they go in all kinds of little manifestations. This one here we have circuit opener of locks. Okay, so what kind of locks do you open? What kind of locks can you open? I can open anything. Doors to a boudoir. Something Ted might want. Doors to another world. Which is what Anne promised us, more or less. Okay. What were you saying about a trade? I can return to my sphere of origin only if we complete a trade. I will unlock something for you, if you give me something in return. Can you open a gate into the surface world? Again, this is what I Now that's a tall that order, a and the only thing you've got is a little love. Not exactly true love, but the closest thing to it in a world of five real people, four of us. You say love has trading value? Love is a very rare and precious commodity down here. It is worth much at the bargaining table. Betray your love for Ellen, give me her soul, and I'll open the gate to the surface world. So there you go, we have a, um, a fairly ultimatum style deal here. So Ellen's soul exchange for the gate to the surface world. So you can basically betray her and um, get to the top. Um, which obviously, you know, it might be something that appeals to Ted's narcissism, but then again, not so much into his, um, you know, his, his, um, knight complex with all his chivalry. Okay. So yeah, why can't you take her soul? How about taking the witch's soul instead? No, I don't want that old hag. I want something that you value. Okay, so the value to us is important to whatever the trade is. Okay, and I'm not going to tell him I'm going to sacrifice Ellen. Don't think too long, human. There are other players in this game, and I won't be able to keep my offer open forever. Okay, so, do we have anything of value? Um, well, we have something which is of value, um, which is Ted's blood. Ted is, as we said, very narcissistic. He values his, you know, his himself very highly, and that's kind of what we, what this is supposed to represent, I think. Yum. <sighs> that's much better. I feel my energy renewed. I hope the holding power of this circle lasts. Now, what were you asking me, human? Let me think about your offer. Don't think- Okay, so, I forgot to do something before, and again, this is adventure gaming. Um, there is a door that he needs to unlock. Ah, uh, the wolves are coming. Wolves. 
wolves howl like that because they're hungry or because they like to torment their prey? So the wolves are coming. You don't have to worry about that just yet. Uh, we're going to go down here because the door we need to open is this one here. So... The door's locked. Okay, so that's all we need to do because I forgot to do it before. Um, now that we know that door's locked, we can ask him to open it. Oh, it's a nice little touch, actually. It um, reminds you... Uh, when you see the spinning disc, that just tells you you haven't saved in a while. I'm not going to save this run, just for now anyway. Really hope I don't stuff it up in that case, but I'm fairly confident I can. Oh, I'm not going to make any mistakes. Okay, back to Sergat. There we go. So, can you unlock the maid's bedroom? Unlock the maid's bedroom door. And slightly brighter, slightly more pretty. It is a trivial little task, or not even requiring any pyrotechnics. The maid's boudoir is the now open for your inspection. Let me think. Don't think too. Okay, so um, that's one little deal done. We got a favor out of him, so we can see if we can get something from the room. That howl was much closer than before. Okay, so we obviously we don't want to get eaten by wolves, so we're going to um, fix up this door so they can't get through. Push it back. The door won't close. Okay, so. How do you do this? We push, use the door. The door won't close. No, is it push? Push the door. Maybe it's push the door. The door won't close. Okay, hang on. Bear with me. It's almost perfect. Okay, I don't know why that actually works, but it does. All right, now, um, it's you can't actually close the door, so you actually have to push the statue in front of it. Again, adventure. Okay, so now we're trapped in the castle, but the wolves can't get to us. Okay, this is the door that he said he would unlock. So let's see if it's unlocked. And it is. Hmm, this must be the servants' quarters. Okay, so uh, we see a couple of things here. We have the um, mirror again, broken because the. Um, the uh, lady of the house does not like mirrors because of the way she looks. Okay, and here we have a big tapestry. The devil's looking into a hand mirror. Okay, so a little bit cryptically, that's supposed to imply that the devil knows something about this um, mirror. So we're going to go back to the devil and see if he knows. Oops, that's wrong. And see if he knows anything about anything more about the mirror. And. Who's this? Who just appears? Doesn't say anything. All right, let's go chat to the angel. Who are you? Do not fear me. I am an agent of the Lord. Can you tell me where Ellen's mirror is? No, I haven't seen the mirror. If I knew where it was, I would use it to get rid of my fallen brother. Okay, so a bit of a clue there. Um, the mirror is, is not obviously so just a mirror. It's kind mirror. of magical. Mirrors harbor incalculable power in this sphere. They repel some and attract others. What power does this mirror have over Ellen? It can bring about either her salvation or destruction. Her fate now rests on your shoulders. Yep, it's all up to Ted. Okay, so... Please, save us! Fear not. Salvation is at hand. Okay, so he's kind of just hanging out. Alright, let's have a chat to this guy because we... Yeah, we saw the tapestry and I think you know where the, where the mirror is. I've seen the tapestry in the maid's bedroom. And I think you do know where Ellen's mirror is. Oh, alright. I know where it is. I hid it before the angel showed up. I didn't want Golden Boy to use it to his advantage. Remember the angel said he could use it to defeat the devil. Okay. Please, go away. Sorry, but your friend is about to die soon. And I've got first dibs on her soul. Actually, I forgot to talk to one thing more, so I'll just have a quick chat to him again. Okay, so where's the Where is Ellen's mirror? I hid it someplace good. Some place where an angel would never go. Now, that's now will you a get off my back? And to be honest, I think this is um, quite, quite creepy. Uh, not exactly 
doesn't make a lot of sense where it actually is. So you've got, for example, the um, sinister little cathedral bit. You've got the room full of the evil books, you've, um, and you've got the boiler room. Now I would think it would be in the either the uh, the, the witch's place or the evil kind of room, but no, it's actually. Um, and again, this if you haven't done this before, it's quite frustrating. It's actually in this book, which we read before. There's a hand mirror right between the Inferno and Purgatorio sections. So this is where the devil hid it. So if you remember, that's actually a book we've read before. Somehow Ted did not notice the, um, the mirror in the book he was reading. Okay, so we've got the mirror now. Now if you remember the angel told us that the mirror has a great deal of power over the devil. So we're going to go ahead and use... I'm gonna, okay, I'll talk to Ellen first actually. Ted. Please tell me you found my mirror. I found your mirror, Ellen. Then show it to me. Let me see my face one last time. Oh, I look so tired and empty. It's time to sleep. Sleep forever. She is dead. God have mercy on her soul. Not so fast there, golden boy. Her soul is mine. I've waited longer. But Ellen suffered so much and gave to many. She deserves salvation. Listen to me, you feathered propaganda machine. Like that, I'll pluck you alive before you take this soul anywhere. I'm waiting until I get it. You forget that patience is a virtue. I will wait until yours runs out. Hmm. Okay, so, um, now, again, as I said before, this guy gave us a clue that the mirror has a lot of power over the devil, so we're going to use it on him. My, I am gorgeous. Why, I could just plunge right into myself. There we go. And Ellen ascends to heaven. Ellen is now safely in heaven. So Ted saved My the day. time here is ended, but I leave you with this warning. Do not break the mirror until you bring it and the devil into the charm circle. God bless you, Ted. Okay, so he's all gone. Alright. Again, you can see the background now is very, very bright green. So, um, it's a good sign. Alright, so, we've got one more little thing we need to do. It would be nice if this stayed open, but you have to open it. Okay, so, remember we said we were going to... The, his offer was that you um, trade Ellen's soul for... Um, for the portal to the surface world. Remember, this is all underground, and the... Um, not really sure of the state of the planet at, the, at this point. Okay, so have a chat to him. Ellen's dead. It's too late for me to give you her soul. You fool! You listened to one of Am's manifestations, didn't you? Now you have to find something else to trade. Alright, so, we do have something else to trade. We have the mirror. What happened? How did I get trapped with this demon? I brought you some company, Sir God. That was damn stupid, human. Hell, you're not even human anymore. Not exactly. Not with being kept alive forever just to be tortured over and over again. Who do you think is responsible for that? Why Am's responsible for our suffering? Not just Am. He's clever, but he doesn't do much original thinking. He works best with outside research. Research that one of your party carried out. It's important to remember that even You're ruining though... everything! Shut up! You shut up! So one word to the boss and your little game's though, um, over before you can Am say very human-like in many of his qualities. He's still programmed and he still has limitations. Don't you even think of touching me, you backstabbing demon! I'm the established character. You're not even supposed to be here. When this sequence ends, somebody will be expunged. Human, dead. Let 
let me out of this circle. In return, I will open the gate to the surface world. I'm part of the big machine. I can do this. Let me out before this pompous oaf bores me to death. And of course, we only have one option here. And you'll notice the background is completely white. That means we've done the scenario as best as you can. Open the gate to the surface world first, and then I'll erase the circle. Not to worry, human. I always uphold my end of the bargain. Here you are. But bring your radiation suit. I never promised you paradise, just the surface world. As you can world. see, the world is scorched. Enough of this turgid passion play. There's no more to accomplish here. You'll notice Ted's device. He is both kind of on display and he's being shot at by little mirrors. Again, for his narcissism, why she is supposed to be ironic. Sweet agony. With the knowledge. The service world is no longer habitable. Who among you shall go next? Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that part. And like I said, if you want to let me um, know which character you want to do first, again, we've got Gorister, Ellen, Benny, and Nimdok. Although I'm just saying, I'm not going to do Nimdok until last, just because it reveals a lot more about the story than I think is a good idea to um, to um, basically go through at this point. It's a, it's a good one to finish on because it gives a lot of... Um, a lot of... Um, really interesting things. Alright, so, next one, let me know if you want to see Gorista, Ellen, or Benny. Okay, thank you very much.